I was recently browsing on Levels.fyi and I saw that they put out an end of year pay report for 2023. If you didn't know, Levels.fyi, in my opinion, is probably the best source to get pay information and pay transparency across multiple locations and companies. Keep in mind that they may be inflated just because it does require people to self-report their data, but there's really no benefit to users self-reporting their data other than I guess maybe it makes them feel good. So generally, I think it probably is mostly accurate. This is going to be my first time ever looking at this report. I haven't looked at it in previous years. I'll just share my screen and start a screen recording now. I'm gonna go ahead and first just pull it up. I did download it, but I promise I haven't looked at it. I guess it's interesting that they do it for other industries. Like I said, I'm in software engineering. I think they show software engineer in a box and whiskers plot. Looking at this for software engineer, it seems like the median being 175K or 176K in 2022 seems really high. I mean, that's more than I get. Uh, so I guess interesting there, but I suspect this is probably heavily skewed by San Francisco Bay Area salaries. Um, I'm assuming this is probably only including US data because if, if it included Canada or European, certainly Asia, India, I think that the averages would be a lot lower. Interesting that data scientist average salaries are lower than software engineer still. I think that probably will change in the future, but that's just my guess. Product manager salaries, very high. Um, interesting, I guess there's always program managers, project managers, I guess that's not really listed. So it's kind of a gray area to me since I guess from the software engineering side, kind of a running joke is like, what do PMs actually do? But it's kind of a question of what P is in PM. Business analyst is another broad one. Um, hardware engineer has very high salaries as well. Not really surprised there. And then of course the management roles are also very high. It's interesting that software engineer salaries actually went down where the rest of the market seems to go up. Now that I'm recording this in January 2024, that's especially interesting considering so many tech companies have been doing layoffs early in January, which is pretty surprising, I think. I know Google, Discord. This negotiation thing is an ad, so I'm probably just gonna ignore this. I don't know anyone personally that has actually used Levels for their negotiation and services, so I'm not really going to pay much attention to this either. Nice, so it looks like it's going to break it into levels or kind of bands in the progression of software engineering. So entry level engineer, basically new grad engineer or early career engineer. Actually looking at these salaries, I knew Jane Street was gonna be super high. I kind of expected it to be dominated by quant companies. So I am a little bit surprised that like Two Sigma and Citadel are not on there because I've mentally have always considered those to be like some of the highest paying. Figma is a bit of a surprise. IMC, I have not heard of. And then the rest of them I have heard of. It's worth noting that probably almost all of these companies, their salaries or total comp compensation is heavily influenced by their stock options or stock package. Plaid, I'm not sure if it's public even, so that's something else to um, consider. Let's take a closer look. So their stock rate is pretty big, um, but considering that they're still private, I guess it's probably just an estimate. Same thing with Databricks. I know it hasn't even IPO'd yet, so I am a little curious like how it actually works with the valuation of these stock grants if it hasn't even gone public yet. Could be very valuable or it could tank when it goes IPO. Not sure. So if you're watching this and you work for one of these private companies that haven't IPO'd yet, but have a very high total compensation, 
Let me know in the comments if you have a better understanding because I am pretty curious about this. Next up is Engineer 2, which is what I think I generally am. Uh, I'm still Software Engineer 1 at Microsoft. Hopefully Software Engineer 2 soon since I'm coming up on four years of experience. It is considered career level as you can spend the rest of your career operating at this level without being pushed out for not being promoted. I would like to be Software Engineer 2 at Microsoft and go a little further than that, at least. But it's good to know, I guess, if I wanted to just kind of stay there forever, that's good. Airtable is actually interesting to see here because I know they did have a lot of layoffs last year or 2022, I'm not sure. Netflix is unsurprising. Um, I know that Netflix is actually pretty interesting because Netflix is one of the companies where they pay a lot of base salary and not as much stock, whereas most of the other companies on here, stock is a big, big portion of their total compensation, maybe um, the majority. Well, Microsoft is not on here, and I can guarantee you that my salary is not even remotely close to these total compensation numbers. Um, I'm just going to take comfort in knowing that these are probably all based in the San Francisco Bay Area and that cost of living, which is significantly more than Washington, D.C. Software Engineer 3, um, let's see, expected to lead and own complex technology. Okay, nice. Less than 30% of employees in a company are at this level. That is true, I think, at least in my experience. So here we see some new entrances. Two Sigma, which I thought would be on the list earlier for Software Engineer 2 and 1, was not on there. And I mean, this is where it's really getting crazy. Other surprises, I did not know Snowflake was in Bozeman, Montana, which is pretty cool. I just went to Big Sky last year. And Snowflake is public, so I do feel like this total compensation value, I actually have a little more understanding of how that was derived. Roblox, always a big payer. I did actually do an online assessment for Roblox when I was an undergrad, um, about to graduate, but I completed it and never heard back. So I can guarantee you I do not have this kind of salary. I don't actually know what Coupang is. Apologies if I didn't say that right. What is Coupang? Interesting. Founded by Bom Kim, so a Korean. Amazon of South Korea. Wow, okay. I clearly need to pay more attention to the global markets because I didn't even know what that was. Takeaway for me is everything here is so incredibly high. Like these total compensations are ridiculous for a year. I mean, my, my, my. Staff engineer, 10 plus years of experience, much more coveted than the previous. So I think you're seeing that as you move up in software engineering, it gets harder and harder and harder to move up. So going from software engineer one to software engineer two is difficult. I can't even say because I'm still software engineer one, but going to two to three or like new titles, it gets harder and harder going up. Um, little to no day to day coding is scary. I think that is something that makes me think I do not really want to necessarily do that. But um, I guess it's kind of expected with the career growth. Wow, so some more new interesting things. HRT, LinkedIn was there all along, OpenAI. Man, OpenAI, staff engineer, that's bordering on a million. Wow, wow. You know, we work a lot with OpenAI and I can say that the Microsoft salaries are not close to that. Um, LinkedIn, which is technically owned by Microsoft, is consistently on there. I'm not really sure how difficult it is to switch between Microsoft and LinkedIn and vice versa. Um, not that I'm really looking to switch right now anyways, but I am curious. I can vouch that it is pretty rare to see someone with that title. Even more rare is like principal or obviously vice president or partner, but really makes you think. I'm kind of just speechless, honestly. Oh, here we go. Principal, 
15 plus years of experience, less than 3%. I actually think that this 3% number is a little low, at least in my experience at Microsoft, but it could be totally dependent on your org, and I'm only really considering engineers, but it seems like there's more than 3% at least in the area that I work at. Facebook, wow. So I guess there's really not a huge point of me looking at these because it says only a small percentage of employees make it to this level. I would love to be principal. I would love this salary, but realistically, I don't know if that would happen. But crews, never heard of that. I'm wondering if this is like an EV. Okay, so it's a self-driving car company. Considering that, I wonder if they're even profitable. Regardless, that salary is insane. I'm curious how much of that is actually base. So as you can see, I'm definitely like, I prefer more base than stocks. I don't have that much experience. This is just my two cents. Other titles, software engineering manager. Yeah, super high. Coinbase. It's cool that Coinbase is remote first. I feel like that is totally dying out these days. It's good to see it there. I mean, these are just super high, super high. Wow. You know, I really thought NVIDIA would be here in the hardware engineer one, especially if you consider how well their stock has been doing because that has just been absolutely ripping, it feels like. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. So if you look at the top US metros, San Francisco Bay Area and Seattle are just way, way more than the other metro areas. It's kind of interesting to me that the Nova and DC salaries are so much lower than Seattle because I thought that the cost of livings were comparable, but based on this, it doesn't seem to be the case. And for what it's worth, it looks like Austin has higher median pay than these other areas, Boston, Denver, Nova, and DC. And from what I know, it seems like Austin's cost of living is really not that high. So it seems like Austin's bang for buck is pretty good. And as you can see, it's a pretty big drop off between the European salaries and the US salaries. So I'm thankful to be a US citizen and working here in the US. And top international cities. Israel's not surprising to me at all because there's so much good engineering coming out of there, notably like Intel and Nvidia which, like I said, I'm surprised we did not see on the list. And it looks like that's about it in terms of my overall reaction. Just wow, um, all these salaries seem super, super, super high. I would love to see another report that didn't have the San Francisco Bay Area salaries or maybe the New York salaries. But yeah, I mean, how does it make me feel? I would say I'm comfortably numb because I've seen stuff like this on blind before where people complain about their peanut salary of like 250000 or something. I personally am just not interested in any of the quant or trading companies, but I am interested in the kind of just normal tech companies, so that's why I like working at Microsoft. But uh, I really would love to see some sort of index with like happiness, work-life balance index, and salaries, that would be interesting, but obviously I'm not gonna do anything or this doesn't really change anything for me day to day after reading this report. But it was super interesting and kind of shows how insane these salaries could be. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and be on the lookout for my next video soon. Thanks.